I must admit, I am deathly curious to know how a void gate came to be hidden in the depths of these ruins. To tell that tale, we must first peer far to the south, and even further into memory. An age five millennia past, when the Algan Empire sent an invading force to the shores of Merasidia. The southern people rallied around the commanding figures of Bahamut and Tiamat, and fought fiercely to repel the would-be conquerors. With Bahamas defeat, however, the tide turned against them. Desperate to seize any advantage, the Mercidians resorted to summoning primal entities. In response, Emperor Zande forged a covenant with the Cloud of Darkness, sovereign among the all-devouring denizens of the Void. Thus bolstered by icons on one side and Void Scent on the other, the two armies clashed in a battle of unspeakable carnage. So much death, so much loss. I consider myself well-versed in that period of history, yet you speak as one who witnessed it happen. Indeed, I did. I heard Tiamat's roar of defiance and sped toward that war-torn land. Along with my sibling, Ashdaya. We dragons are not male or female, as men are wont to classify, but Elder Sister is the closest a mortal tongue can come to describing what she meant to me. I was the last of our brood to hatch, and Ashdaya cared for me where my sire could not. Thus, I was with her when Tiamat roared. I was with her when she journeyed south, and I was with her when she fought against the void sent hordes. Yet no matter how many of their vile fiends we cast down, more rose from the abyss to take their place. Faced with an unwinnable war of attrition, Ashdaya risked her all on a final gamble. She plunged through the void gate itself to strike at the root of their strength. I tried to follow in her wake, determined to lend what aid I could. But even as I came upon Alag's glittering tower, I saw the rift close behind her. And Ashdaya has been lost to us ever since. I find I must retract my earlier claim of historical knowledge. Nowhere in the Crystal Tower's archives did I see mention of such noble sacrifice. That does not surprise me. To Alagan eyes, it must have seemed as if a lone dragon, driven to madness, simply dove through the gate and did not return. For my part, I spent long years searching for the means to reunite with Ashdaya. Until I could search no more. Until Alag was dust, and the arts to open a void gate large enough to accommodate a dragon forever lost. Yet you have the beginnings of a gate right here, under the control of a harnessed device. My discovery came before Radzathan was founded. Though I scoured the lands for a method to cross the rift, it was beneath the sea that I chanced to find a natural plane of fissure. It was, however, far too narrow to admit a worm's bulk. Only after our city rose upon the rock, and I could enlist the aid of our talented alchemists, did matters take a favorable turn. 
their dedication was beyond reproach. Tirelessly, they worked to expand the fissure, and after decades of toil, it finally grew to a size that a child might pass through. Not long ago, you told us that you called out to your kin, but Ashdaya's answer was silence. I suspect the conclusion to your tale is not a joyful one. With hope in my heart, I used a simulacrum to cross the threshold. But no, I did not find her. What I found was a host of void scent clamoring around the opening they had sensed. It was but a moment, but enough. I had no choice but to retreat and allow the portal to contract once more. The gate was a threat to your people. You had to decide between endangering Razat Han and abandoning your sister. And you chose the latter. It was not that thy sibling scorned thy call. It was that she was trapped beyond a barrier through which neither roar nor dragon may pass. Even now, in the desolate world of the Thirteenth. I can scarce imagine your pain, yet it was wise not to linger in that place. Too long a sojourn, and even a being of your power risks being warped into a creature of the Void. You've seen this phenomenon before, when we stepped into the darkness. Turned purple? Well, yes. His wounds had allowed the Void's corruption to enter his body and twist his ether. Had it been allowed to progress much longer, I presume he would have been fully transformed. Then there is little hope for Ashdaya. Ah, no. I hadn't meant to. I speak only of possibilities. The scales of the first brood are extraordinarily resistant to ethereal fluctuations. They are the protective talisman's core components, after all, and even the corruption I described would struggle to overcome. With the warding scale in one's possession, one could conceivably survive a stay in the 13th without being warped by its energies. Be that as it may, it is too late to rescue my sister. Five thousand years too late. And now countless others look to me for guidance and protection. When I sensed intruders in the ruins, I came only to ensure that the gate remained closed. That, and to secure the treasure, of course. I wish only to forget the rest.